Oh my gosh. Steve, you look like you have a lot of weight on your shoulders. You know what? Ah, sh I feel my life feels more in balance. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna to wanna to avoid that bathroom for a little while. Uh, speaking of which, today we are gonna to go through my day-to-day -day schedule. We get a lot of questions from our awesome subscribers, just like you, about what it is uh, that I do during my day. And I think you'll find a lot of it exciting. I keep my schedule jam-packed full of a lot of fun things. Specifically, we're gonna do something awesome with the Bugatti today. You have to stick around and see it. You would never expect a Bugatti owner to do what I do with my Bugatti. Um, but stay tuned, and there's a lot that, I, that I'm gonna go through today, and I really think you're gonna enjoy it and learn a few things along the way. I wake up every day around 6 a.m. I personally need five hours of sleep, but I think I do better with around six hours, so that's what I try to aim for. But once I am up and ready to go, uh, it's time to pick my favorite supercar to take to exercise. Um, and, and then from there, it's just kind of a 20 minute cruise to the gym. It's super important for me to, to hit the gym up. I've been doing it for 10 plus years. I go to the gym five days a week. I exercise, I do a lot of heavy lifting, not a whole bunch of cardio. A big part of the reason that I go to the gym is not only to stay healthy and so that I can keep up with my kids, but it's also so that I can go ham at restaurants and just eat everything that I see. I'm on a seafood diet, you see? I see it, I eat it. Uh, that's an old, old joke, old guy <laughs> joke. My trainer's name is Jimmy, he is a kick trainer. He works me hard. That is what she said. He just does a really good job making sure that I, that I maintain my physique and that I burn calories and stay healthy. This is my favorite day of the week because today is the day that I get my massage after the gym. I've got some shoulder issues, so the massage always kind of helps out with that. When I'm done with the massage, of course, I move on to my shower. I don't want to be sweaty and stinky all day long. Got a shower to have a good, successful day. And now we're here. So recently I got a little more involved in day-to-day -day operations of my wheel and tire business. Um, before I was largely kind of out of the day-to-day -day game. And now we found some opportunity to optimize, drive some more sales. So I'm deep into the mix and actually really enjoying being back in the driver's seat. At this point, I'm typically knocking out a bunch of emails that I'm getting, uh, doing video chats and just, uh, just getting the team started off on the right foot, making sure we're all aligned. When I was super actively involved in the organization, more than half of my day was spent doing meetings and emails. Now we have such a freaking awesome crew that I can just run some ideas, check some metrics with them, and they can just take it and run with it. In my opinion, we have the best crew in the entire industry. Something super important to me is to make sure that my wife and I have plenty of time together. Her and I will go out to eat and spend a good amount of time together each week. So we make sure that we plan time out in our calendars. And so today we are gonna go out to a lunch. What's your favorite supercar? Supercar? Or hyper that I've got. How about any of your cars? No. It has to be a supercar? Well, what's your favorite car that I have, period? The Chevelle. Ah, oh, the Chevelle, very nice. Like me some muscle cars. Very nice. What is your favorite one to drive? Um... Outside of the dailies. I like driving the um, McLaren. 720, the orange? Yeah. Caroline and I met in high school. She was 15, I was 16 years old. We have been together now for 20... Two years, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, almost, yeah, a little over that. And married for 15 years. This will be our 16th year. Do you remember what shirt you were wearing when I first met you? Um, yes, I was wearing my white Doors shirt, Jim Morrison. Mm-hmm. And... And then I said to you, <laughs> hey, I like that band. She thinks that she... I started it first. She thinks she started it first, but I think that I... She was right by my friend's locker, and I feel like I was the first one to initiate conversation, but she says she was, so... It was me. You all know I'm right. <laughs> that was before the age of cell phones and cameras, so... Caroline's really good about... I'm really bad about scheduling things and, like, setting up times to connect with people where she is very good. That is her skill. She is a great people person. She's got a good heart for hospitality. She loves taking care of people. She loves being a part of blood drives and and making meals for people after surgeries, after someone's sick. And this woman can cook. Mm -hmm. Should have had you just make lunch, right? <laughs> that would have been easier. You get a day off, there you go, you deserve it. What's the secret to a 21 year long relationship? No wait, 22 year long relationship, what's the secret? heads more it's when we have 
Yep. I think that's helpful. I can go do a girl's trip or he can do a guy's trip. We'll plan something together, but we always encourage that for each other. Mm-hmm. It's good to have that time away and together. Because <laughs> <laughs> when we're apart, we miss each other and realize that we need each other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're like, eh. <laughs> You're like, stay, stay gone longer. <laughs> I'm like, I realize that without being away. Uh, oh, that's <laughs> cute. That was cute. Jeez, it's really stiff. That's what she said. <laughs> Do you remember in high school once when you we were walking through the parking lot and you swooped me and then I was like, you put me down and then me oh, and yeah. smacked my head yes. on the ground then you fell on top of yes, me. Yes, that was, was bad. Disaster. That was bad. Well, I can drive a car 150 <laughs> miles an hour around a curve, but like parking, can't do it. He'll pass Parallel. up perfectly good Oh, spots. yes, yes, yes. I'll pass up all the close <laughs> ones trying to get like a closer and closer and then I'll just end up parking as far away as possible like a dum-dum. I mean, um, parallel parking I can do well though, yes? Yeah, you can. But regular, easy parking, it's a mystery to me. <laughs> I just got my tires in for the Bugatti Chiron and we're gonna head over to SD Wheel and I'm gonna try to install these things myself. I'm talking about pulling them off, dismounting, remounting them. Sensors, did we look into that, Tommy? I think we're fine. All right. We'll we'll figure it out. I'm just realizing that probably has tire pressure sensors. I don't know if we stock them, but you know what? That's okay. We're still going to go ahead and do this. Uh, my brother Joel was kind enough to lend us his Hummer H1 because Tommy wrecked my Resvani. Otherwise, we'd be throwing him in the back of that. Tommy, you still owe me some money for that, buddy. Steve, let, go watch the video. Steve was like, you have to do this. And he goes, he's a bitch. And then I wreck it. And he's like, oh, he f- it up. <laughs> He'll be paying for it for a little while. It's about 10 years salary. These are big. That's what she said. That's cool, guys. I'll put them in here. I bleed, Tommy. sweat, and cry for THC. I'm not afraid to get my hands dirty. Oh my gosh, dude, that's, that? that's the biggest boo-boo I've ever seen you have. Look at this boo-boo. <laughs> this is from putting the plate, the license plate in the Chevelle. For those of you that don't know, because I get asked all the time in the comments, we are heading to SD Wheel. This is a company I started at the young, tender age of 19, um, with no money out of my parents, actually out of their apartment foyer. Um, and uh, we started just drop shipping wheels on eBay and it's blossomed into this awesome organization with a fantastic team of around a thousand people. We have locations in Wisconsin, Illinois, and, um, and we now operate Custom Offsets, Fitment Industries, Mr. Wheel Deal, Archon, Anovia, and a bunch of other wheel and tire and aftermarket automotive brands. Um, I've actually been largely on the sidelines for the last year and a half. Recently, Sean Chartier and myself um, got back heavily involved and um, we just saw some opportunities and we're just working with the team to help the company be even better, grow even faster. You know, I, had, I had barely visited this, this building, but maybe once every few months and now I'm, now I'm starting to be there a little more regularly and just really awesome to be back in the mix, back working with people. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to go there. And Jeff with the G is telling me that the wheels for the Audi R8 are also done. So why don't we go kill two birds with one stone and put on the new wheels on the R8 as well. And while I'm picking up the R8, I realize we're at Iron Gate where I've got my new huge headquarters coming for the Hamilton collection. It's gonna be open to the public. So we hope that you guys will come visit us when it's open in a few months, check out the collection. Big part of the reason I do this is to involve you, the subscriber, into our collection. We want you to come look, touch, feel, drive the cars. Um, so we hope you come visit us, but let's go take a walk through. My prior unit was about 2,000 square feet. This one is 10,000 square feet, so we're hoping to get like all 40 cars in here. I don't have 40 yet, but all 30 something. Would you agree that it feels much bigger once you're inside? That's, <laughs> you set me up, bro. Well, we're gonna fit a lot of cars in here. This is gonna be huge. So we have our headquarters, we have some offices here. Um, we'll put merch there. We have a little mezzanine where we can hang out and get work done. All this room for cars. We have a wash bay right here, which will be pretty solid. I want to get like a giant neon Hamilton collection retro logo right there, like yeah. a big one. And Tommy talked me into almost $100,000 worth of lighting to make sure we really show off the collection. So <laughs> wait till you see the lighting setup. It's actually pretty badass. I'm excited for it. Am I not the best one at spending your money? Even above your wife. Am I oh, better at spending oh, your money you, than- Oh, you have spent more of my money than anybody else I've ever known. <laughs> You're welcome. This is my block now. <laughs> See ya, Steve. I'll take the Hummer, that's mine. Who's driving? Who's driving the R8? Not the chef? Do you want to drive it? No. I'm gonna drive, <laughs> I'm gonna drive my Bugatti. Right. Mark my words, I'm gonna buy that car one of these days for $5. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. That's not my name. Gia? 
Nope, still uh, awful. And that's how we greet Jeff what? every <laughs> single time we see him. We're going to start with pulling off the little caps that go on top of the lug nuts, and Bugatti provided us with this handy dandy little tool right here as I break it and scuff it. What's up? And that's how it's done, folks. Taking a small break from the Bugatti to have these R8 wheels mounted. I'm going to have one of my team members go and do that because these Bugatti wheels are taking forever. Also, the first time I'm seeing these, the, worst. the team, so I'm, before I uncover them, these guys hate them. They are and, the uh, worst wheels. Oh, jeez. And the clutch. You thought, oh. oh. Jeff's like, <laughs> Jeff's like uh, nervous. Bro, because, you saw, you oh, thought the, what? You thought the 720 S wheels were bad? I, I mean, <laughs> This is the next level. These are Anovia wheels. This is actually a three-piece wheel that was custom manufactured. This is our brand that we design, manufacture. Um, these were built here, right here in the USA. So I think they look all right. You little <laughs> they look all right. <laughs> one side down, one to go. All right, hands are all washed up, Tommy blew me top to bottom, and we are all ready to go. So we are gonna go actually run to an awesome business that I invested in. It is a close friend of mine, Vitaly, and his dad, Oleg. It's called Urban Microgardens. And the super cool thing about this, because I don't invest in a whole lot of businesses right now, one thing to note is that I'm a huge food guy, and this ties into my love for food, and it also ties into some other projects that I've got going. So while we're gone, Mr. Jeff with the G was kind enough to say that he would install our Audi R8 wheels. So we'll be back here in maybe an hour or so. We will show you what the Audi looks like with the new custom three-piece wheels. Tommy's probably gonna hate him, Natalia already hates him, but I think they're gonna look pretty good. <laughs> Curb the <laughs> out of those ones. Mark my words. We are here at Urban Microgardens. We're gonna go in and see Vitaly, and we will show you guys exactly what it is that we do here. As it should, right? As it should. <laughs> What's up, man? How are you? Good, how are you? Good seeing you. I was, uh, you up for the, I was going for him. How dare you? Come on, man. Oh, yeah. When you look at the product, it's so beautiful. It, it's so, you're, you're used to it now. You're like, you're like, this is just a daily grind, but it's, Look at, like, you guys have never been here, yeah? These are basically microgreens, and we've talked about doing, like, edible flowers, and, and these are distributed to restaurants all over the area into Chicago. So if you get a soup and you get fancy little greens put on top of it or a lot of dishes, there's a good chance they come from here. Uh, and, and what Urban Micro Gardens does differently is they're very fresh. Like, I've looked at product at Whole Foods and other businesses, and the greens just don't, they don't look good. They don't taste good, and everything I've ever had from here is just, they look amazing, they taste really good, and one of the coolest things is this has opened up connections to me into the restaurant world. So I've been able to connect with restaurant owners, and I love, I love meeting people that own restaurants and have started really just businesses um, from nothing. And, and that kind of ties into the next venture of my life. So at this point, I'm looking into like investing into the community. And so the, really the only investment I'm looking, I'm looking to make going forward is, is doing neat and unique things to the community. I've looked at an old drive-in and revamping it. Um, I've looked at bringing something very 50s, like a huge 50s hangout spot, um, like the one in uh, Pulp Fiction, it's called Jack Rabbit Slims. Like something like that, bringing that to the community of Wheaton and the Chicago area would just be awesome. And that's where my heart is and that's where I'm gonna spend a lot of my time and focus over the next little bit. So again, this was kind of a gateway into getting into that, connecting with the restaurant community and being able to do that, but you guys gotta check this stuff out.
Vitaly and his father Oleg started up this business, and what, what was it that made you want to like bring this to the community? Well, the health side of it attracted us originally. Starting the business, we went to restaurants because yeah. that's the biggest need. But eventually, I mean, we're hoping to educate people and get this mainstream on the health side. Getting, getting people healthy and side benefit was serving some, some restaurants within the community. I love it. Correct. Tommy wants to try some. Can you snip? Yeah. Can you snip, right. snip? Tell you, send me one. Snip, snip. Uh -huh. Yeah, when I first came in here. So these are pea shoots. Pea shoots. Delicious. And I'm just good to go to just down it. Bon appetit. Cheers, boys. That's yummy. Really, that, it tastes yummy. fresh. I should have not told you what it was because you can taste the You can taste the pea. Right? You can taste the pea. That's super good. <laughs> taste the pea. We were at the Graceful Ordinary so yesterday good. in St. Charles and these were on my steak. So yeah. I mean, how oh, that exact one? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You should bring your own next time. I, I make it a point to go eat at restaurants like the Walrus Room here in Geneva, delicious. It's, yep. awesome, it's awesome eating a dish and, and seeing like our microgreens on their dish. All right, thanks for telling us always, brother. Appreciate yeah, it, man. man. Stopping by. Good to see you guys. I really do love coming here. It's, it's amazing seeing this stuff every time. Early I love it. Still, man. We're growing. A few moments later. I'm in a really bum mood because I just saw this R8. Me and Tommy are both making the ooh. It's actually worse than I thought it could be. It's really bad. <laughs> It's really, it's really, really bad. He pulls up, he's like, yeah, she looked pretty good. <laughs> like, we both looked at it, me and Bailey, we were both like, oh. They look like, he got them, like literally, if you were to buy a wheel from Walmart, that is exactly what they would look like. <laughs> Steve, for real, you prefer these or the last wheels? You prefer them? Um, I don't remember what it looked like. <laughs> I, mean, I think this is pretty good. <laughs> Style-wise, absolutely. Color will probably make some revisions. God. They call you the rim god, right? No. Yeah. Literally no one does that. <laughs> <laughs> no. I see why. No. <laughs> on to the next stop. We're here at Cannonball Garage. Every now and then I like to check on my vehicle. So we have the Nissan GTR here that's getting a 200 plus thousand dollar um, complete engine rebuild. We're going to make it 2,000 horsepower. And I also want to talk to Jordan about my 765 LT that I literally got a few days ago. And we're already going to do some modifications to it. So you'll find out about that in just a sec. How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Checking out the GTR. I know, I know it's a, a long extended build. Yeah. I, you know what I told them? I'm like, I am gonna, I am probably still gonna hate it, but if it shoots three to four foot flames. I mean, if you wanna blow the turbos quick, we can yes. do it. All right, yeah, we can do it. <laughs> <laughs> what specifically, so they're taking, you're taking factory cast iron block. Yeah. And then you guys are boring it out, rebuilding all piston, new pistons, crankshaft. Full rotating assembly, yeah. Full rotating assembly. Yeah, heads obviously and everything. So yeah, yep. T1 is doing all that. New turbos. Yep. And right now, the trans everything is completely out. Yeah, we just uh, got the trans back yesterday. Um, oh, the trans is back. Stage Let's check it out. Cool. That's your front lid. Fill it. I see. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. You can't just build a, an engine to 2,000 horsepower. You've got to strengthen everything else so it can handle that. Cannonball Garage is the master of all things McLaren, so of course I'm going to send my McLaren here. Uh, they did my 720S in the past and several of my other vehicles, including the GTR that we just talked about. Uh, the Senna. And so we, uh, we committed to doing a tune and downpipes and exhaust system on the 765LT. It's coming in here at the end of March to get all that stuff done. We're going to try and get around 1,000 horsepower. And I think I mentioned before that uh, my 720S with the tune was my favorite car I ever had. So believe it or not, with all these hypercars, I anticipate this new 765LT will be my favorite of the whole collection. Best bang for the buck. Any comments on uh, we're doing an unobtainium? Exhaust. Yeah, unobtainium exhaust. I mentioned um, and then a, and then a three and a oh. half inch catless downpipes. Um, and then yeah, unobtainium or uh, M engineering tune. So there should be a basically the same setup as your 720, but what power should that power. make? You think? Well, it's probably net mid 800 wheel. Oh, it's wheel. not too bad. Also yeah. 959, 950 the crank. Yeah, I don't know yeah. crank stuff, but wheel stuff. Yeah, 8, 850. Um, Whatever. 93 octane. We if you want to run 100, yes. if you want to run 100, <laughs> you'll probably be closer to 875, 900 wheel. So whatever my 720 was was as fast as you need. I know that you're doing 1300 plus horsepower cars, but like any faster and you shouldn't be on a public street. No, you disagree? And he's, oh, he's building you a 2000 horsepower. That's going to be one of the fastest cars. All right, that's a good point. That's a good point. Everyone's got a thousand horsepower car nowadays. You that's know? True. Uh, we're going to go look at the roll cage. Uh, apparently that just got in for this GTR. Let's check it out. Roll cage for when I roll it. Oh, it's blue. Something that I did with this is I was tired of making decisions, so I just empowered the THC team to just start ordering stuff. I don't even know if you told me it was blue. Remember? I'm like, just go <laughs> I did. Right. We are down here at Cannonball Garage. On to the next step, which are several apartment buildings I own that are conveniently like 10 minutes from here. 
So I'm gonna hit those up and I'm also gonna give you some advice and what I look, what I look for in real estate um, and some like just awesome perks about having real estate and why I think it's one of the best investments that you can do with your money. Get up, get up. What do you think? I don't know. Arnie, come here. I don't want to say it. Arnie, what do you think? Oh, I don't know. It's different. Have you seen worse <laughs> wheels? I guess, I guess I have. Okay. Well, I think the style of the wheels looks good. It's just that they're bright gold. I agree. I agree, hundred percent. Like if those rolled up in a dark matte bronze, you guys wouldn't even yeah, think twice not, about it. It's not the right yeah. shade. Exactly. Or the straight shape or anything. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for roasting the shit out of my car. Look at this. Absolutely. Thank you, yeah. Thank you very much. Good to see you, brother. Awesome. <laughs> On to the next. I'm here at my apartment buildings. What? Uh, oh, where'd she go? I was. Uh, I was greeted by one of the tenants who happens to be one of our employees. We have a lot of our SD Will employees that that live in the buildings. Look at her over there. <laughs> I mean, when they see a Bugatti park out front, they pretty much know who's, who's coming there. But, <laughs> He's just um, pretty much like, they're like, oh, it could be Steve. He has the only shred in Illinois. <laughs> I know. As far as tenants go, I'm pretty picky about who, which employees I'm going to let be a tenant. And uh, him, uh, her and Sean, Jamie and Sean, are two of the awesomest people. Sean has worked for us for a long time. Bust his butt. They're both just good people and good tenants. And I like having good tenants so that I can take care of good people. Uh, a little bit more about real estate and why I chose apartment buildings. I have owned every type of property, industrial, single unit, multi-unit, um, every type of pretty much commercial apartment building, single family homes in many different areas. I like multi-family apartment buildings the most. Um, if, I, if I go and spend a half a million dollars, yes, that's a lot of money, but if I go and spend that, I'm gonna get the most return out of an apartment building, and if I lose a tenant, I still have five other tenants that are gonna be paying a rent. Whereas if I go buy a $500,000 single family home, if I lose a tenant, now I'm footing that bill all month long. So single family, not only do I make less money, um, but I only have that, that one tenant. Now some other awesome things about real estate and why you'll typically earn 20%, that's right, about 20% at the end of the day. In the stock market, I think the average return has been 8% over the last 70, 80 years. So I typically look out for about 8% net. So that means if I buy a building at $500,000, I should be making $40,000 a year net income. That's 8% of the building cost. However, what gets you to that 20% are some awesome tax benefits that you can take advantage of. So you can depreciate this building. That means I can just tell the government that it's worth a certain amount less per year and deduct that from my tax return. It's not illegal, it's, it's encouraged. They want you to go buy real estate. Now at the same time, apartment buildings in any real estate also appreciate. So the average appreciation is about 3% each year. So that means this $500,000 building is gonna be worth 15,000 more the next year. Now this real estate market's pretty freaking crazy right now and everything's appreciating like 15 to 20%. So this building value might've gone up 50, $60,000 this last year. All the while this is happening, I actually have tenants paying down my mortgage for me. The money that they bring in is more than enough to pay for my mortgage and all my expenses. So it's, it's kind of crazy not to go invest in a building like this. So you've got the combination of your net income coming in from tenants renting out the building, appreciation and depreciation, and usually that equals about a 20% return each year. And real estate has been a very safe and stable, other than 08 and 09, the crisis that happened. And I was fortunate to buy a lot of my properties right after that at a very good price. Um, but that was really the only like real period where properties depreciated substantially. Um, but since like the 50s, 60s, homes and multifamily have been one of the most stable assets that you can purchase. Less volatile than stocks, better return. Side note, that doesn't mean I only invest in real estate. I still have a 401k. I do invest in some stocks. I like to have many legs to stand on. Um, and a few of the other businesses that I haven't talked about are I actually own a bunch of Pet Supplies Plus stores. I have some other investments in a solar company. On this block alone, I own four buildings that, that pretty much and then another few blocks away, I have a nice eight unit building. I just sold a couple in uh, a couple cities away and I was able to make a good profit because again, the market right now is stupid, uh, but always looking for good opportunities and good prices. I am still very thrifty when I shop for anything that includes real estate. So I'm not gonna buy something if I'm not gonna get a deal. Right now the market, as I mentioned, is not a buyer's market in my opinion. So I am at a point where I think home values have gotten a little too crazy. I'm gonna wait and see what happens the next year before I start looking at other opportunities. Back home to spend some time with the kids, y'all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been a long day and this is my favorite part of the day and that is going home winding down and seeing the wife and kids on that note family time is super important to me so that wraps up this video please be sure to like comment subscribe yay and check out all of our other socials and we appreciate all the folks like you that support us. Thank you very much and have an awesome day. Roll out. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. <laughs>